I just built a crypto Bitcoin mining farm. And today I'm gonna break down how, how much did this cost? Because let me just open the video with, this was exponentially more expensive than I had anticipated it would be. I blew my budget and then some. And I'm gonna share with you what I did, why, some things I learned along the way, um, and just everything in between. My name is Voss, you're on the Voscoin YouTube channel, and uh, this is the most quiet this farm will ever be because I can't talk too long today. I'm setting up miners today. Just plugged in the first Bitcoin mining rig here on the farm, and whew, I'm, I'm pretty excited. This has been a long time coming. I'm gonna break this down by chapters, right? So chapter one is, where are you gonna do it? I'm already assuming that, you know, you got a rig in your house and you did some testing and, and you got a plan and, and you understand the basics of mining and, and how to set up a miner and the basics of electricity and things like that. If you haven't, watch our starter video guides on that stuff. So number one is going to be location. Where are you doing it, right? There's a lot of different ways you can go about this. Always start in your house, get your bearings, get your feet wet, do some pilot experiments, right? And so then you're gonna, you're gonna outgrow your house. These things, they're very loud, they're very annoying, they produce a lot of heat, and it's just not something you're gonna want to have in your house for indefinitely, trust me. It's great to have some of the quieter mining rigs in the winter and basically get free heat, you know, because it's a byproduct of mining. I know there's a little bit more to it than that, but we're gonna keep it surface level. So location, right? So when you leave your house, where do you go? Your yard, your property, how much land do you have? Is that possible? Do you have a backyard? Could you put a shed there? And then that kind of solves it. Do you have more land, right? You could basically come up with a building or some kind of structure, anything, right? You got that flexibility. Maybe you don't or you don't want to do it that way. Then comes your quest for either land. You're gonna go raw land and you know build whatever you need to build and go about it that way. Maybe you're gonna go buy a house or something else, a commercial building, you could rent a space, right? And convert it. All of those different routes, big variables there. A lot of different ways you can go about it. For me personally, I only ever saw one route that interested me and that was buying land and building it out. To do that, depending on where it is and the situation, you'd be fine with quarter acre and acre but the more acreage, the better, especially because you want some privacy, you're gonna make louder noise, you could get complaints, you could deal with issues. Give yourself a buffer zone because the major mining farms, depending how big you're gonna take this, they produce white noise on just like a deafening level. Uh, so definitely kind of think about that. When I began, I just moved into my yard. I dropped a shed and converted it. I'll talk more about that in the next chapter. Uh, but now I'm sitting in my mining shed a 2.0 at our 3.0 mining farm. And we also just got a plug and play Bitcoin mining container, which I'll explain more about that. So I actually have two very popular options to scale when you have the land. So the cost on that, it's variable, it's up to you. When you set out, you're looking for somewhere you wanna to go to because you're gonna be there frequently, you know, especially in the beginning. Uh, you're looking for ideally cheaper land. You're looking for above all a good electricity rate. Okay, a starting good rate is critical because you can try to negotiate down depending on your usage and your electric company and situations like that. But like if you start in California, like you're gonna be in for a bad time and you're building a bad business. You're competing, especially in Bitcoin mining, right? With major players that they have million dollar deployments and they seek the best rates and they grease hands and try to get the best electric rates and all that stuff. That is why I do a lot of altcoin mining. Competition is a lot lower there and I believe in altcoins. I think the upside is high. So that's another thing with strategy to consider, but we're really focused on infrastructure. So land, location, rent a warehouse, whatever you want to do, just make sure in addition to electricity, you also do research on internet because a mining rig not connected to the internet is no good. But keep in mind that 5G, LTE, 4G, Starlink deployments are much more accessible today than they were even just a few years ago. I'm mining off Starlink right now. The satellite dish is right behind you. Uh, it's not literally, it's, it's right behind the camera. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. You, you wanna see? I'll take a picture for you. 
So location is complete. The next chapter is going to fully flesh out electricity. We already talked about seeking rates under the location. So now we need to get power, right? So I reached out to the power company, submitted my load letters, and they're like, dude, you're pulling some pretty serious power. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we are. And they're like, cool. I'm like, can you pull my power for free because of that? You're about to bankroll my ass? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we could do that. She's a really nice lady. Uh, she showed me on her iPad all the projections and everything. They're projected to make over $125,000 profit in the next four years from my mining farm. Maybe I should just invest in them. But then there wouldn't be me. What if there were two of me? Would that be like betting on both sides? But the bottom line is, I had my electricity installed for free. If they didn't do it that way because of my high electricity pool that I have basically on schedule, it would have cost $100,000. They're also taking me so seriously now, thankfully. We're also working on bringing three phase to the property, which helps my scalability and different kind of equipment and infrastructure I can deploy. Okay, which that's something you really need to seriously think about. Is your electricity single phase or three phase? If three phase, which one? Because there's a couple of types. My mining farm is entirely built off of single phase. That's like residential electricity. And I'm in the process of bringing three phase over the next year and I will upgrade some of my equipment to do that. It will increase my density. And that is just going to help with scalability and getting costs down. Make sure you fully understand that before you do anything. If you get lost in the sauce anywhere in this video, ask comments down below, I'll check them, but also post a thread on Voscoin Talk or Forum and join our Discord server, the original mining cryptocurrency Discord server. Incredible community there. The guys in there are much smarter than I am. I ask our community questions all the time and it's so helpful. We have a lot of geniuses in there. They give out for free what people pay thousands of dollars in mining farm build consultations. Just think about that. So we've covered getting the electricity to me what phases I have available. That helps me tailor what kind of building deployment I'm gonna do for the next step. And uh, then you gotta get it installed. So my original mining shed cost about two grand to wire. They also cut the vents in and put the ceiling uh, exhaust fans in. That was in 2017. In 2022, when I had this place wired up, it cost about three grand, but I got a pretty good deal. Keep in mind, inflation, materials through the roof, everything like that. Uh, I also, this is critical. So in my first mining shed, I wired 200 amps, also single phase. So 240 volt, both legs of 120. Here, single phase, 400 amps. Before we even get into the electricity chapter, we talked about the location like, you know, okay, I'm gonna build on this 20 acre lot or whatever you were gonna do, right? But within that, you need to have your specific spot where you're gonna do this, because that's gonna come into all the calculations of how much it costs to get electricity there and uh, things like that, right? And so with that specific spot, you need to make sure you have accessibility. How can you get there, right? Do you need to install a gravel driveway? I did. I spent basically 10 grand on this piece of the gravel drive install. My whole gravel project was actually 20 grand because I built even more than that by Voxcoin HQ or whatever name we come up with to call it that building and also enlarging these gravel pads to have future expandability. I could have done this smaller, different, cheaper, but this was future proofing in a way. And I did not anticipate dropping 20 grand on a gravel driveway for this project. Uh, you know, there's a couple different ways to do it. My electrician specifically was like, hey man, like if it's muddy, we can't go out there. It's way too, it's right, been raining way too much. I'm like, no, don't worry about it. We got a gravel driveway to it. You can definitely access it. And that's critical because those things will slow your project down so much depending on where it is and how you do it. If you got a shed in your backyard, not really a concern. Some things to think about in your planning. Uh, you know, and I got a really good rate on the install and the gravel. I was paying like 22 bucks a ton. You should budget probably 30 bucks a ton for gravel 57, which is the typical gravel you see and think of just that gray rock. And it's very possible you may be paying more than $30 a ton. To put it into perspective, right, you see one dump truck dumping uh, gravel, that's about 22 tons or uh, maybe a couple more tons uh, in that dump truck. Bottom line is it adds up quick. Correction, I only pulled 100 amps in my original mining shed, uh, not 200 amps. I had a 200 amp service on my house and I grabbed 100 amps off of that, shot them right into the original mining shed. So like if you're wiring to your shed from your panel and it's a good distance, you are paying your electrician to, or unless you do it yourself, to wire that. 
He's got to go from your panel. He's got a trench. You know, assuming you're gonna put it underground, not through some kind of overhead installation, uh, or you know, maybe you're in a warehouse, you got a big distance to travel from your panel. All that distance turns into labor, it turns into material, right? This wire, right? And that's a cost. Make sure you just kind of keep that into perspective. Again, it's a sliding scale, how far you go, it's gonna cost more, just along with your basic labor charges there. So, with that said, moving to the next chapter for me, internet, I chose Starlink, best option for me. Uh, cost me about, I think, $550 to get the hardware because uh, they charge, you have to buy it. <laughs> no, great, really good hardware to buy if I ever move to something else. Um, that's the whole point. But anyway, I guess in a way it's better than a rental agreement that I just have to, uh, you know, pay indefinitely, kind of like the internet bill. But hey, I mean, it is a service, right? Uh, so that's gone up in price. If you want to do Starlink, budget about 700 bucks for the hardware. Keep in mind, you need to mount the dish to some way shape or form and ideally not do a ground deployment right now i have a, a ground deployment on top of a barrel with two screws into it uh, but i'm going to uh, mount it here on the gable of this shed uh, for a permanent installation i'm actually going to use their mount it's ridiculously priced uh, and you could definitely diy it another way and do it much cheaper but for me i specifically chose that mount because that means i don't have to drill the roof or come up with some kind of other complicated install and it'll be very quick, it'll be very easy. I don't drill the roof, and then I'll bring the wire from the Starlink satellite dish down around the side, and I'll drill in, and I'll silicone the hell out of it, and if somehow water did get in there, eventually it's coming in down the side, it's not getting in the roof, and potentially leaking on hardware, and well, shorting out the whole master plan. But basically, for Starlink, you're gonna pay 700 bucks or so in hardware, and $110 a month in electricity. If you do something like one of those 5G options from Verizon, you'll have a lower bill, but you may not have as high performance. Uh, for me, basically, to get Starlink working, you also have to buy their stupid Ethernet adapter, which, bam, there goes another 27 bucks. It's something you just don't even think about. It should be criminal that they don't include a freaking Ethernet adapter on it, but alas, here we are. At least they have an adapter, right? Basically, internet install is going to cost you somewhere between probably like 100 to 1,000 bucks plus a reoccurring monthly bill for me, I'm in for about a grand uh, to do it the way I'm doing it. If you have multiple buildings, you need to get internet to those. Like for me, I trenched an ethernet cable into the digital shovel. It's come, going to come from my Starlink satellite uh, system that is installed here in the mining shed, all underground, sealed the uh, conduit, and it's in there, plugged into the switch, bang. We got internet in there, hardwired. That all costs more materials and labor. Uh, so. Contracting that out along with the materials, I mean, you know, just like that at 500 bucks or so goes by real quick. So we've got location, specific spot, electricity, internet, all of that solved. Now we need a building. So I'm a huge proponent of mining sheds. What really kicked off this crazy crypto mining, uh, just journey of mining. Uh, and you know, you can do these smaller, I've done vinyl sheds every time, that's more expensive, it's definitely cheaper to do wood, uh, but I like something that's more maintenance free. Right? I could just pressure wash it and it's good as new, lasts longer. Uh, so I do vinyl every time uh, with my stuff, but you can do wood to get your cost down on that. Uh, my original mining shed was about three grand, 2017, delivered, nice. It was 10 by 12 and it had a couple extra features like a couple more little windows, octagon windows and stuff like that. Just a couple windows will get so much light in your shed. But you're building basically a, a mining container. Uh, so you don't really want them on the walls and things like that. That becomes an issue with people peeping in. Hey, what are you doing in there? Oh, looks like something great worth breaking into. Uh, so that's specifically why I do high mounted windows like that transom window. That transom window gets so much light in here and I also have window on the door just because that was their standard option. Um, I would have preferred nothing on the door, but again, standard option, trying to keep the cost down on this uh, mining shed as well as the last one. That was about three grand delivered, 10 by 12 shed, vinyl, couple upgrades. And uh, that's, that's, pre that's pretty good, especially back then. Now I paid about $7,000 for this mining shed. This mining shed is 10 by 24. Okay, so it's much longer, it's the same width. Uh, I also have a garage door on it. Very optional, not needed. 
but I wanted it because it allows me to bring a bunch of stuff in here, or big stuff real easy. I didn't want a double door. Those are harder to lock down, secure, and uh, they let more air in, harder to you know airtight the place, stuff like that. Oh, so anyway, this is the way I did it for better and worse. The upgrades to this would be upgrading the vinyl siding, the transom window, the garage door. That's it. It's pretty much a small one car garage, Amish made, just like my last shed. Those guys kill it with build quality. If you're looking at a shed, make sure it comes with a, a sub flooring, a, a good sub flooring, ideally. Like, I've got a nice quality thick plywood in here. Gets the job done, it's sturdy. It's on four by four skids on the bottom. So basically, it's just real solid, right? And it's I put it on a gravel pad, and then later on, I brought the rest of the gravel in and just surrounded it with gravel. No drainage issues, no mud. Uh, keeping it simple, keeping it straightforward. As always, that's the plan. DIY mining sheds are great and they're gonna be a common solution for smaller scale, medium scale deployments. Of course, if you're in some kind of warehouse uh, or something like that, industrial environment, you're just dealing with the infrastructure. Uh, that's pretty much imp implied. I'll talk more about what else you need to do the farm here in a second. But as far as like more buildings and things like that, um, you know, there's plug and play options like the digital shovel mini pod, which we just brought in. Uh, keep in mind, these things are, they're cool, right? I mean, it's plug and play. It's got everything. You just hook up your electric to it and you are instantly deployed. You've got a switch in there. You plug, 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 go, go, go. Great. It's got intake vents, filters, exhaust fans, security system. Sweet. Uh, but that comes at a premium. Getting into that unit or something comparable, 40, 50 grand. But you do get the best deal if you tell them you saw the Digital Shovel Mini Pod on the BossCoin YouTube channel and basically use the BossCoin code. Uh, you will save some money. For me personally, I'm thrilled to have basically both options. Uh, just being a freaking mining nerd, it's so much fun. It also helped me relax on the mining shed. And I'm going to do a lot of my deployments in the pod. And then I can spend a little bit more time figuring out exactly how I want to design this uh, with what I'm going to put in here. because. I'm contemplating switching this to an immersion mining shed. Uh, but, you know, as far as mining shed goes, it's pretty simple. You cut intake vents on one side, and then you cut exhaust vents on the other side, or put exhaust fans on the other side, and you use a single flow through design. Cool outside air coming in one side, exhausting all the hot air out the other side. That's it. As long as you have good airflow, these miners will keep themselves running. I'm in Virginia, it's hot, it's humid. And it's fine, gear is fine. You just need adequate airflow, period. Other than building some kind of weird little custom structure, which really ultimately is just kind of like a bare bones shed style, you know, that, that's what you do, that, that's what you can do here. So for me personally on this farm, retail value, I'm into mining infrastructure for 50 grand to deploy 800 amps of electricity, uh, you know, as far as just the actual buildings here go. You could do it cheaper, you could do it more expensive. The next chapter, right, the next thing you'll need is some of that actual hardware infrastructure. You're going to need PDUs. You're going to need power cables. You're going to need Ethernet cables. You're going to need racks to throw these miners on. Basically, depending on your size and deployment, budget a couple grand. Keep in mind, like with the, the, the mini pod over there, some of that stuff is already there. Like the switch, the PDUs are built in, the racks, all you really need are cables. I'm gonna need all that stuff for in here, and that's fine. I understand, I budget for that. Uh, for me to deploy 400 amps in here, it's gonna cost me two to three grand. Uh, a, lot, a lot of that budget will be spent on the PDUs. PDUs are expensive. You can buy them used on eBay because a lot of server farms just you know sell PDUs in great condition uh, just because they upgrade or shut down or whatever else. You can also just grab stuff new on Amazon. Uh, do not skimp on stuff like this. If you skimp, it's a fire hazard, it's an efficiency hazard, and it's just stupid. Uh, ab above all, mining rigs, any of them, especially when you start to get serious, are expensive. Do not skimp on your power cables. Get quality cables that can handle the load. Get quality PDUs that can handle the load. Uh, I, I really can't stress that enough. Um, yeah, so budget a couple grand there. Uh, for me, I, I haven't finalized everything in here yet, but it's probably gonna, what the way I'm gonna do is probably gonna cost me about three grand. Uh, I, I wanna, I'm, I'm going, you know, top tier stuff here, at least as far as mining goes, uh, cause this is a permanent deployment for me. You can see my rolling tab here. This starts to add up quick. It's added up very quickly for me 
here. Uh, again, there's ways I could do things cheaper, but I'm trying to do things nicely, and this is a permanent deployment. And yes, I'm pulling electricity from the grid for now, but my end game is to put up solar panels and more solar panels and more solar panels and eventually produce all of my own electricity. You should watch our video on how much it costs to mine with solar. Those infrastructure costs can get crazy quick. So I'm still trying to figure out how I can get those down, what I can do myself. Um, and yeah, so that's definitely a work in progress. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind, remember you know, your distance from where you are to where you're mining. You're gonna be going there frequently. I bring it up again just because specifically it can become a real drag when it's like, oh, some stuff went down. I gotta go drive you know, an hour or more round trip. You know, it cuts into your personal life. It can lead to burnout. Try to set yourself up for success. Maybe if it costs a little bit more, maybe it's worth it uh, to kind of you know, restore your work-life balance, even if it slows down how many miners you, know, you can budget and deploy. Of course, I haven't talked about the elephant in the room yet. And no, I'm not talking about the tons of gravel. Bam, I wrote. That was a pun, tons of gravel. You My joke was so lame that it messed up the camera. <laughs> and then I kept talking for a few minutes and then I watched the freaking shutter go in and I was like, God, I'm, I'm kidding. I, the, I actually exceeded my time, or I guess I'm talking too much or, or whatever, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. I can't believe I talked this long about this subject. I guess I got a lot on my mind. Uh, so yeah, the elephant in the room is just gonna be your mining hardware, right? Sky's the limit when it comes to this stuff. A bigger budget, more miners. Uh, just make sure you don't go too heavy on the infrastructure and you don't have a budget for the actual mining rigs. If I could suggest anything, it's just to get a bunch of hard numbers in hand before you embark on this mission because I assure you that your infrastructure and just your setup expense will cost so much more than you think it will. And if you don't budget according, accordingly, you're, you're gonna be set up, uh, setting yourself up for failure. I think I go heavy on the infrastructure side. Um, I even noticed that when I would, you know, play some certain games like uh, City Skyline, which was the spiritual successor to uh, SimCity. It's like so much fun. EA is just a trash company that's dropped the ball with so many different things. And obviously I don't even need, need to say Command and Conquer, right? Zero Hour Generals, what an incredible game. Good time. Uh, but to, to the subject and point here is that I, I, in the city skyline, I would bankrupt my city sometimes because I was like, oh, I'm put all these cool roads and all this infrastructure and I wasn't generating enough revenue uh, from my people yet. And we'd go belly up and, and you can pretty much kind of do that with a mining farm if you blow your load, right? Gross, right? All of your infrastructure. Oh, fun fact though, you know, or one more thing to think about depending like if you do some kind of rural deployment, Make sure you think about amenities, right? You're, you may get hungry, you may get thirsty, maybe a little fridge. You know, do you have access to water? Do you have to drill a well if you need water? Can you do some kind of in between, like just bring out, you know, five gallon, you know, uh, drums of water and things like that. Um, and then also a bathroom because those kind of things have easily are easily overlooked until you know you're really busy, you're out here, you got a bunch of stuff to do. Uh, there's no bathroom anywhere near close, and you get the bubble guts. Okay, you get the bubble guts, and you ain't got no bathroom. Well, that's when shit coin mining gets all way too literal. So on that note, I'm gonna wrap this one up. That's everything I can think of when it comes to building a mining farm, the cost, the infrastructure, uh, you know, what I've learned, um, you know, so far. I still have more to learn, uh, but what I do have is an operational mining farm. So I cannot just yell at the camera all day today because I need to go plug some mining rigs in. I mean, what? Hey, debacle, I'm sitting in a mining shed, freezing, because it's cold here, when it's supposed to be grossly hot in here. I'm supposed to be sweating soon. I'm Bosk. You're on the Bosk on YouTube channel.